Hi everyone, welcome back to Animal Crossing with me, Austin John Plays. This is number 16. That's double the amount of eight. So I left my last episode off with, I had big plans for what I wanted to do with the villagers and my big plan reveal, here it is. Basically on the left hand side over there, I want to sort of make a mountaintop in which the villagers houses are going to be stacked up between the first floor, the second floor, and the third floor, and it's going to look dope. In a previous episode, I said something that was misinterpreted as the natural tarantula or scorpion island no longer exists. That is not at all what I said. I said that I think that there's a problem with the DIY tarantula island, and it's harder to farm tarantulas on islands that are not tarantula slash scorpion island. That is what I wanted, that is what I meant to say, just clarifying it now, because I've gotten like 30 tweets in the last 48 hours that are people who are like, I'm on Tarantula Island, you said it couldn't happen anymore, I'm like, nope, I said the DIY one can't happen, if you haven't seen that video, the video's in the playlist, great. More clay! What's with the clay balloons? I guess my first step is to move this river and make this higher and rip to that rock. I've been theorizing in my head on what I want to do here. And I've come up with a pretty dope idea. These first two rows are going to be super inconsistent, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to have the first two rows as just flowers and then a fence. Definitely not that fence, a much better fence. And then I want three spaces, one, two, three, as sort of the front yard, but two more spaces for the walkway. And then the house is, will be on that row right there. That's like the front space of the house. Like I'm gonna walk right up to that and place down the house, that's the plan. So this is gonna be all quote unquote activity room for the villagers. And I'm gonna give them like, I don't know, like table sets and stuff so I could build up their atmosphere a little bit. And then we're gonna bring the cliff up right here. Five for the front yard, three for the house. And the house is gonna end there. And my idea is I wanna take this river and I want to split it off. Half of it is gonna just shoot down there, right to the river where it's supposed to go. And then half of it is going to sort of snake through this area. Like I'm probably gonna have it come over here and then down here, down this cliff. It'll come right down here. <laughs> I didn't wanna get in the bed. And then I'm just gonna have it sort of trail off a little bit into a two way and then it's gonna go right down here to the ocean. Might even be able to cut through these two houses here. Huh. And I'm gonna put a whole bunch of bridges. Bridges are gonna really bring this place together. And I think that's gonna be one of the, the key things here. I might even make it come down to a little pond. Although I don't like first level ponds. But yeah, that is, that is the master plan. Oh, they're all doing yoga together. Is Sprinkles a woman? Oh, Julia has fleas. See all the fleas bouncing up, uh, up and off of her? Which I believe when a villager has fleas, you can either give them medicine or... The curse is lifted. I was so itchy because of fleas, thank you for getting it off of me. I owe you one, darling. Nice. Oh, is that, a, is that an achievement? Yeah, itchy fleas are a real hassle. So it's become a daily thing that every day I go in here and I check the machine to see if there's any new fences that are available because eventually I'm gonna need all of them. I mean, I'm gonna need all these things at eventually some point. Oh, by the way, a bunch of people have been asking me what the rusted parts are for. You need 30 of them for Robot Hero. So after helping Gulliver, the next day you get a rusted part in the cleanup box and you need 30 of them for Rusted Hero. I just realized that I already know how to make an iron fence. Great. To be honest, I'm not too sure why we get this cutscene. If, uh, if it's not like they could say no. So here's Walt's house right here. And I want to see if I can squeeze it exactly in this space. Oh, not only can I do it, but it takes up less space than I thought it would. The way that's nestled in there perfectly. Okay. I found a use for the custom pathway tool. I can mark out where I'm going to put water. Hooray. I seriously doubt it, but can I move two houses the same day? You're going to tell me no, because you're busy with your construction and moving something, right? Yeah, I'm pausing full moving Watts home at the moment. I like how I took a moment to appreciate how they were outside doing yoga. And because of that, I noticed the fleas. 
Like if I was just running around all willy nilly, I would not have noticed that. Because I made my way to those rare islands, I was able to get the rare color roses, the pink and the orange. And someone else, hit, I also got the, the rare hyacinths over there. Someone hit me up that they got the rare wind flowers. So I'm actually going to go to their island, dig up their rare flowers, plant my rare flowers, and that's essentially how you go about trading these, which it seems to be the way that works right now. Do keep in mind, you need to be a best friend in order to dig up someone's roses like that. So I've been working on some stuff. I hung out with Zoe on her island for her birthday. I went there and I showed her some love. Amazing people, also over 600,000 people saw the video of me going to Zoe's island in the Southern Hemisphere. I mean, when the thumbnail is a shark, it's pretty great. And I just come to the conclusion that while this does mesh with bridges, it, you can't put pathways like on stairs or under stairs, so there's always gonna be that awkward gap right there. And oh God, I hate it. Tonight, I actually wanna decorate this area up a bit and get it a little bit more zen-like. I don't have the zen fence yet, and I'm super upset about that. And I re now realize that I had someone visit my village in the campsite, and it's a horse whose name is Ed. And I, uh, the humor is not lost on me that there's a talking horse named Ed. But it's a guy with a comb over, he's super emo, and he's a blue horse and no thanks. <laughs> I now realize that when you leave without talking to them, they seem confused. I thought I saw Celeste somewhere. Oh, there you are. Hey, don't go inside. I came across a recipe for an astronomical project in a book and jotted it down. Oh, this blossom viewing lantern is really dope. Oh, it's in my inventory. <laughs> I forgot to learn it. The Ares rocking chair. Oh, I have the Ares fragment. It's a white goat with a gold necklace and gold horns. It takes two Ares fragments, so we can't even craft it if we want to. Great. Awesome. Super. Amazing. So with my Zen bridge here, I already have the recipe for the Imperial Fence, and I think that these two are gonna match really well, pretty thematically. Ironically, there is a Zen Fence, but it doesn't match this. So I think what I wanna do here, summon with this bridge, that fence, and then also the seasonal recipes, the Blossom ones, like this lantern, really dope. Okay, well that's maybe all I could do for right now, but we can build on this as the month goes, right? Because cherry blossoms, yay. I just realized that in order to actually put something there, I need to... Oh God, it's Wisp again. Huh, Gulliver and Wisp and Celeste in the same day. That's pretty neat. Tall Lantern. Yeah, that is definitely a power, a power piece to have right there. And turn it on and keep it on forever. Great. Oh, wow. I really like the way this looks. This thing looks so much cooler than I thought it would. I think this is by far the coolest, the coolest thing out of all the Cherry Blossom sets so far. Oh yeah, that's awesome. You know, I was literally just thinking to myself, can I get these at night? I almost feel like I should make three more and put them at various parts of the bridge, like the the, outs, the outermost corners. By the way, that, that one blossom that I just got is now the only one I have. Oh, and I need to bring this down for that to feng shui. Uh, I wanted to go over this a little bit more piece by piece just because people are always like, oh my God, Austin's Island looks so much better than mine. And I wanted to kind of go over the, I, I guess you'd call it the creative process. I don't even know what you would call it. So I was talking with some friends and I think that there's sort of a pattern to the balloons between the different colors of the balloons that come by kind of tell you what's going to be in there. I bought the wood flooring and I'm really not crazy about how it looks. I think this is the perfect example of you have such a thought out idea in your head and then as it goes along this super thought out idea just just completely gets changed so many times. I'm going to go on the hunt for more cherry blossoms but while I'm doing that I might as well hunt down part of this boy's soul, right? While I'm hunting down these, uh, these petals, I was reading over the comments from the video posted, uh, six hours ago, or three hours ago, 
from when I'm actually recording this live and I I made a statement in my last video that I'm very excited to be doing terraforming and this big project and everything and I, I may have spoken very pessimistically to people who decided to do uh, date skips, which if you want to date skip, totally cool. Play the game however you want. I just, I realize that this is a game that once you go through it quickly, there's not much else going on. And like day three of the game being out, someone using the item duplication glitch and having terraforming on day three, it's just kind of like, wow, that's a really awesome, you know, mansion you built at the top of a mountain with waterfalls surrounded the, the museum and stuff like that. Uh, good for them. You know, they chose to play the game the way they wanted to. It's a single player experience. Enjoy it however you enjoy it. I enjoy it the way that I enjoy it. And I'm just excited to be doing something big and crazy so people could see, oh, you don't need to time skip in order to do, you know, a crazy base that people are going to be like, wow, that's awesome. And I, I didn't mean for it to be like, oh, you know, screw those guys. I meant for it to be more of inspiration of, you know, you can play this game legitimately and live it every day till its fullest and get so much out of it. That was that was what I was trying to come across. Not, you know, I'm better than those people. So sorry if it did come across that way. On a lighter note, I am almost done collecting all of the petals that I need and I'm getting much better at catching these. Oh, also, in my last video, I was doing calculations on coconuts versus eggs, and apparently there's something called coconut juice that you make with coconuts, and it sells for, like, double the value of coconuts, which, pff, very excited to find that recipe, because that's going to change my, all my thoughts, views, and opinions on coconuts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that is nice. That is nice. I should put a, a blossoming tree here. You know what? I hate that it's on the same row. Know what I mean? It's on the same row as the lamps. I decided on back here. And golly, was that a good decision. It looks so good back there. Just perfectly centered. Ah, oh, love it. I'm also going to plant one, two pink hyacinths and three white ones. And then we lay down a little bit of fence because we want to be safe. Yeah, that builds the mood. That builds the mood nicely. Oh, but this is looking so nice. So nice. I decided to do a few trips for the night because I haven't done any in a while. Now, the way I look at it is even though we don't have the DIY Tarantula Island, we can still make some money here. And I am going to bank on a few different things and experiment with even more things. First things first, I'm chopping down all the trees. There's still a jewel beetle that I need to spawn on these stumps, and we're in the northern hemisphere for April, and I don't have any stumps on my island, so I'm gonna use these stumps for now. I'm not gonna be chopping down the coconut trees because that's part of my contingency plan, which I can explain that a little bit more in a little bit, but if I can't get tarantulas to spawn, then I have a second idea. Secondly, I'm gonna collect the earth eggs and stone eggs. The islands are a great place to get them if you don't have a lot of rocks on your island. And when I got my stone egg, I got a recipe. And then my character realized that another recipe can be made combining all the eggshells together. And this was for the party dress and hat, which is pretty awesome. This is now all of the eggshell clothing recipes complete. This just leaves me with five DIY recipes for the furniture and items left for the event. Nice. On the first level, I collect everything other than the weeds. On the second floor, I dig up all the spots with holes except the rightmost and leftmost sides of the pond. That's where I then planted flower stems and weeds. That way, in case there's any water beetles, I'd be able to catch them. 20 minutes has passed by, and the way I see it, there's only a few things I could spawn right now. On the stumps, the jewel beetles, those are worth 2,400. On the coconut trees, the atlas moth, worth 3,000, and they're fairly easy to catch. In the river, the giant water bugs, those are worth 2,000. And on land, we have the mole crickets underground for 500, tiger beetles worth 1,500, and tarantulas worth 8,000. I'm thinking a few things here. There's no way to stop the water beetles from spawning that I know of. So no matter what I do, I need to keep catching and releasing them. However, the water beetles are worth money in the first place, but every two atlas moths are worth three water beetles. So first, I want to try a really crazy idea for tarantulas. I once kept my top area covered in drops and weeds, and I saw a beetle up there 
in a weed space with nowhere to go. So I'm thinking maybe tarantulas and beetles can spawn in weeds. So I also brought a stack of weeds with me and I'm gonna be planting them all along the riverside in a few other spaces. Oh, now check this out. You hear that cricket sound? Well, watch this. I'm gonna plant these weeds and then... Boom, he despawns. Mole crickets cannot be under weeds. Amazing. All in all, this is a good sign. I also caught my jewel beetle, so I didn't need the tree stumps anymore. I just ripped those out of the ground. And now I'm at a little bit of a crossroads. I have three mole crickets and two water beetles. That is all five encounters. And I can't do anything about the beetles, but I could prevent the mole crickets from spawning. If I had more weeds, I would use them, but I don't. So my next best option is just digging out areas. I dug out four rows at the bottom and I'm already back up to three ground spawns. These roaches, the beetle at the top, and this atlas moth. And I hear another cricket. And now I don't. With everything in place, every spot is covered in either weeds, flower stems, or holes. And now we have a really effective atlas moth farm. And it's honestly faster than tarantulas. Every lap from one side to another, I average two moths at 3,000 bells each. So that's a total of 117,000 bells for a full inventory, a full four row inventory. A stack of weeds is worth 990 bells, so we'll deduct that and say 116k, even though you can just go back and pick up the weeds. Oh, and real quick, I learned that if you dig holes around a tree, you won't scare it away by getting too close. Now, throughout this whole adventure, I saw a lot of beetles on the ground, so I think if we cut down the trees, we would only then have ground spawns, tarantulas, and beetles. First, I'm gonna fill up my inventory with atlas moths in case I'm wrong. As I was getting my last eight or so moths, I realized that there were a lot of ground beetles and not one spider. So I'm starting to think maybe spiders cannot spawn on weeds, but these beetles can. And there's only one way to find out. Hi, it's now much later, so I learned a few things. One, I caught two water beetles and within a minute they were back, but only two, never more than that. So I think there's a hard cap to two beetles. Two, tarantulas cannot 100% spawn on weeds. But three, mole crickets also cannot spawn under weeds. So anytime that we have weeds down, both mole crickets and tarantulas cannot spawn there. This island and possibly all destination islands have a bug cap of five. Right now it's two water beetles and three between the beetles and the roaches. If I remove the weeds, then it's three between beetles, roaches, crickets, and tarantulas. While the water bugs are easy to despawn by catching and releasing them, the mole crickets are much more of a pain, although I could just prop down weeds really fast and they're gone. I guess I could just collect the weeds after. Actually, I'm gonna try that now. Well, that worked much better than expected. Let's see if these results continue. And spoiler warning, live late night Austin has something to say about this. Welcome to another installment of It's Super Late at Night and Austin thinks it's f for some reason a good idea to narrate about what's going on. Great, welcome back everyone. My findings have been inconsistent, to say the least. There is one firm notion here, is that there is a hard bug mob cap of five. There can only be five bugs on this island at any time. That's between the ground encounters, like the wharf roaches, the beetles, the tarantulas, as well as these water bugs over here. Oh, and the ground crickets. God, do I hate ground crickets. I think the overall takeaway from this is weeds are a great way to despawn these ground crickets. So fast. You can pick them back up. You don't need to deal with covering up the hole. It's a much faster process. The bad part is, is you could be in a situation like this, that you have two water beetles and three ground crickets, and then you have no overworld spawns. Go throughout the whole island. There's nothing here, but you have two options. One, catch a water beetle. You might be lucky and they might, you know, be away from the, the side, but they're usually up against the side and then you can't see them and boom. Now there's an empty space in the mob cap, and it's going to be filled with one bug, somewhere. And if we come over here, and we find wharf roaches, nope. Or if we go to the other side, and we find wharf roaches, or a beetle along the way, then we know that there's one ground encounter. Boom, there's a beetle. 
Perfect. We still have that one empty space in the mob cap. Now we can just run around. Boom. There he is. We'll run back away. We still have that one space in the mob cap that's not taken up by a ground cricket. There he is. Just run away. And boom, tarantula. It worked. We did it, Patrick. We saved the city. Now is the scary part of Austin. Do you have the turbo on? I don't. Perfect. Sometimes I have the turbo on and next thing I know I just start slapping this thing down recklessly. Great. We got the tarantula. There's now one empty space in the mob cap and that beetle just proved it. We look for one ground encounter. In hindsight, the weeds are great if you just want to atlas farm. Atlas farming is super fast, not including the time it takes to put down the weeds, faster than tarantulas farming. Then again, you're only getting 3,000 bells instead of 8,000 bells. But if your heart is set after tarantulas, then this is the strat. We still have that wharf roach, and we're just gonna keep running back and forth until we either find a tarantula or we lose our ground encounter. Apparently there's server maintenance going on right now at 1.54 a.m. Rip Australian users. That was a dope pop-up though. Like to see that in a Nintendo game? Good on them. And you know what? Having all these weeds down is decreasing our tarantulas and increasing our beetles. So if we go ahead and get rid of these holes and these weeds, then our tarantulas have a better chance of spawning. Because what I've learned is that if you have three spaces open, then three mole crickets can be in those three spaces. And now that we're at a point that our ground encounters are no longer spawning, we catch a water boy, wherever he is. Oh, there's a salt one over here. There we go, water boy. Let it go. Let it go. Now we open up a space in the mob cap. Perfect. Let's look for our ground encounter. And here it is with these wharf roaches. And we're gonna just keep running back and forth until we lose our ground encounter. Or until we get a tarantula. Nope. Nothing spawned. Zero things spawned. So all we have to do is immediately grab another water beetle. Boom. Ground encounter's back. Let's see if we can keep it going. Boom! There's a Spidey boy. That's what we wanted to see. Hi there, Sp- Oh! Nope, 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 nope. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. Ha. Ah. I outsmart you. I catch you now. You're mine. It's not a great strategy. It's not like a simple YouTube tutorial. Boom, here you go. Guaranteed results like it was last month. In April, we got a lot of stuff to deal with. And understanding how to find your mob cap and understanding how a mob cap works is your best tool if you want to do this. How long ago was I done with the Atlas Moths? 40 minutes ago, I was done with the Atlas Moths. So for the last 40 minutes, I've gained one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tarantulas that might not be worth it uh i'm so tired all right so the takeaway of all this is your best strategy assuming that time equals money your best strategy hands down is come here lay down weeds and holes or even just holes you don't even really need the weeds just hole everything keep the coconut trees available and atlas moth hunt in about an hour you get a full inventory 117,000 bells Boom, you're done. Save for a day that Flick is available. He's gonna buy those bad boys at a price and a half. 180K. This is my going to bed graph it. Good night. Well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> There's already an update to Animal Crossing New Horizons, version 1.1.2 updated to 1.1.2a, which now updated to 1.1.3. I think the fastest I've ever seen a game being updated. Apparently they're having issues with the event caused by Bunny Day. And the 1.1.3, what it did is after you popped 300 balloons, no more would spawn, which kind of sounds like a gif and a curse right now with Bunny Day, to be honest. But uh, yeah, just update and then boom, your balloons come back. That is a fast fix. They're doing a top notch job over there. Oh. It's now 1.1.3a. <laughs> Good morning, Isabel. It's Friday. My birthday's in three days. Nice. I don't have any big news to share with you, but I would like to touch on one seasonal topic. 
I sent all DIY recipe app users the recipe for the outdoor picnic set. Nice. She just mass airdropped everyone. Pretty sweet. Oh, I'm still in my sleepy time clothes. First things first, we have some mail. Gulliver sent us something. A turban. I don't know why the turban covered is in the same space as my beard. Also, I don't really need a turban. This fell from the sky today. Don't ask me how, but it was able to be inside one of those presents. I believe Tom used dark magic. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Jack Andy. Trekoid, I want to express my appreciation for all your work terraforming the Isle of Plays, Plays Island. I hope you like your shiny new dartboard. Awesome. Thanks, Trekoid. Here's a third part of the ensemble. The dodo said the seaplane was at capacity when I put it on the counter. Don't know what that means. Can't wait to see what it is. Brandon, thanks for the ad. No problem, my dude. Thanks for the support. Hey, Austin. My name is... That, which means Aqua. I wanted to say thank you. Your videos are amazing. Wanted to give you this song called KK Soul. It's very relaxing. We'll have a good day. Awesome. Thanks, Aqua. Neat. Hey, Austin. I think I have crafted something that will really fit in your Zen garden. Ooh, I'm excited to see what it is. Ferristar, big fan of the channel. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for letting me visit. Hope you can find a place for this rip DIY tarantula island. Thanks, Jonah. We're working on it. Actually, thinking back to it last night, Bamboo Island might work for this and just deal with the with with the with the, the grasshoppers. Harumi, want fish? Have fish. Love all your videos. Thanks for making them awesome. Thanks, Liv. V, you are cool, but now you could be super cool with these. Well, thank you, V. Sean, here are your seeds. Thanks for the roses and the pansies. Oh, so yesterday, Sean and I we uh we traded. Flowers. Trekoid, two of three. Oh, okay. And there's the one of three. You've really dressed up plays with all new paths. With KK Slider planning a whole series of concerts, I thought you might need a dressed up outfit for the season. Ooh, gonna get spuffy. The tuxedo jacket. Wow, that is classy. And slacks? Oh, wow. Wait, wait, what's part three? What's part three? Business shoes. My dude gave me a whole Sexy outfit to wear for a KK concert. <laughs> oh, what's up? I'm leaving for a new island. Did I shock you? I mean, I just decided here on the spot. I want to see how I do somewhere new. Got to strike while the iron's hot, I reckon. I like Walt. I hate to see you go or I'll be cheering you on. Maybe that means don't go? I mean, Walt's cool and all, but we have the option of someone cooler. Uh, why does it have to be you? Why can't it be... Why can't it be hamster? I don't want hamster. Can you take hamster with you? Is that an option? I wanted to let you know you've been a big help to me, kiddo. I reckon it was fun living here. Now that we're pals and all, here's hoping we meet again. Watch for me out yonder, okay? All right, Walt. Been a blast. I don't want Walt to leave. I want, I want crappy hamster to leave. Oh, I had to customize two things. And the slingshot, I decided to be one because it was cheap. And whatever color you customize it, that's the color of projectile. Cherry blossom branches? Nice. Oh, this is from V. I saw V's pixel shades and I got so jelly. Thank you for sending these over, V. I'm gonna be the coolest kid at the bar mitzvah. A champion's pennant? I actually already have one of these. I, I don't know where I put it, but... Well, great, now we have two. Now we can match one on either side of, like, a walkway or something. 10 fish bait, awesome. A tarantula model? Someone sacrificed three of their tarantulas to flick. Tarantulas that to flick are worth 12K each. This is a 36,000 bell model. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Thank you. A monster statue? There's no room to place it? How big is it? Oh my God, it's huge. It's the Godzilla statue. <laughs> Someone sent me their Godzilla statue. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, I have no, oh, wait, 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 wait. We'll just use the cherry blossom floor for now. Yeah, monster attack. Thank you to whoever sent the giant monster. <laughs> Pine bonsai tree, a Moai statue? Whoa, it's an Easter Island head. Okay, dartboard, you're going up on the wall. Apparently you don't go on walls. You're a cabinet. I'm gonna make the basement into an arcade. Obviously we need appropriate wallpaper and flooring, but we're going to make it into an arcade. 
we have this, and then we have the slot machine upstairs. I'm just gonna need a whole bunch of neon slot machines, table games, all that. So I'm gonna be on the lookout every day. I'm gonna visit people's islands every day and look for that stuff. I wanna see what the bonsai tree looks like. Oh, that is adorable. I love that. That's going next to my bed. That's how dope that is. Oh, but this Easter Island head, nice. Oh, I love that there. I also have a bigger bed that I need to craft and I want to do something with the back wall. Oh, I got a reward for having enough furniture in my house. Awesome. Now I just need to hit 150. Remember what I said about always having kitchen stuff? They always have kitchen stuff. And under regular circumstances, I would never, ever, ever buy a cat toy, but I want to, 3,000 bells. I want to get the cat toy and I want to put it at Kiki's house. My cat, it makes sense, right? Bye, thank you. Thank you. What is that? What is this? An HMD? What is an HMD? Oh, well that definitely means something else on Urban Dictionary. Head mounted display, that makes sense. So is this, is this like a VR headset? Oh, I love it. I love it so much. This is going in the arcade room. I'm kind of sewn into my machine right now. Sorry I can't chat, but uh, thanks for stopping by. Oh, she acknowledges my presence now. Awesome. Julia, do you have fleas again? Oh, I thought you had fleas on you. Do you not have fleas on you? Maybe you don't have fleas on you. Hang on, check it for fleas. Walt's house moved. And now it's perfectly placed. Unlike him, he wasn't perfectly placed. He's gonna be moving on. So now we need to move Kiki's house. And now now I'm afraid that if I move their house, they, they won't like me and they'll wanna leave. Kiki, please don't leave. So unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. I continued playing a lot of this day, but now looking back at editing, we're already at a half hour and I'm wrapping this up. And then tomorrow we have a lot going on. We have CJ the Fisherman, he's gonna be showing up. We are gonna be improving on our tarantula farming design, error fixing, stuff like that, and a whole bunch of other things. But guys, thank you so much for checking this out. If you're enjoying the series, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.